Hey everyone, Devin here from American Aquarium. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about the fresh water test kits, what's needed, and really what our objective is to have these test kits. When it comes to the test kits, truly what we're doing is we're just looking for trends. We're not trying to get so scientific that we need exact measurements. What we're wanting to do is take a series of tests over time and make sure that the trends are staying the same. With taking thousands of tests on many, many aquariums, American Aquarium has found that for the most part, all test kits work. Granted that there's not an issue like they are expired or there's excess moisture on some strips, but they all work. So our suggestion is that you just find a brand that you like and you stick to it. For most people, We'll all be using the same tests, but there are some variations in other tests that we may need to add into the main core test that we'll end up using. Our best recommendation is that you get yourself a complete set of liquid tests, but then also strip tests that you'll be using majority of the time for quick testing. You'll use the liquid test for cycling and then also if there's a problem but for but for majority of the time you'll be using strips because of the convenience and they have a complete reading of exactly what we need one of the key aspects that's missed when using a liquid test is not having gh and kh kh is important because this is the alkalinity which is the buffering capacity to keep a ph stable for most freshwater fish what we're going to be doing is taking the tap water that comes out and just trying to stabilize it. There is some variation of certain species of fish that do require a higher or lower pH, but for the most part, many fish can do well with just adapting to a pH and keeping it stable. So keeping a KH of three to five dKH is important because then it's gonna maintain that pH. This buffering capacity is worn away over time, so it needs to be resupplemented and that's when testing it often becomes important. We're testing it, we're redosing it, and depending on how many acids are in the aquarium, that's how fast that buffering is worn away. Note that you never want to chase a pH. Find a pH that's stable from the tap for the most part, and then just stabilize it. The last important test that could be missing from a liquid complete master test kit is GH which is your general hardness these are the minerals that have an electrical charge in the aquarium which an electrical charge is important for the fish's osmoregulation this is the difference between an open system like a river pond stream to our closed aquariums an electrical charge has to be supplied to the aquarium either via water changes or these minerals that provide that electrical charge so measuring and knowing that you are putting these electrolytes in the aquarium is best for disease prevention long term. So in short, the idea is that you stick to one brand, you're going to follow trends, it's easiest to use strips, they are accurate, thousands of tests have shown that, use strips majority of the time, use liquids when, they, when you are cycling in an aquarium or when there's an issue, have both on hand, and then you'll have success knowing what's going on with your aquarium week after week. Also, a couple other tests that make it very easy for testing is looking into Sea Chem Alert, if ammonia and pH, these are easy, they stick into the aquarium, they give you true readings of your ammonia and your pH and they're constant. You can always just look at them and know exactly what your ammonia and pH are and they last for about six months to a year. Very easy. I hope that makes sense for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video on freshwater test kits. If you have any questions, please ask. We appreciate you so much here. Thank you so much. Bye.